So, I know there's pain. So we're just gonna have a, let's just have a quick chat first. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm nervous. A little oh, bit. Perfect. <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah. I'm also a little bit nervous because, you know, as a practitioner, you just never know where everything, where things are gonna go. Am I gonna be able to help this person? So when I feel that, I just acknowledge it and it's okay to feel it. It's part of being human, okay? Nice, okay, so we're gonna be working on pain today. So let's talk a little bit about that, like where, what, and how. Okay, I have chronic pain since a teenager, mm -hmm. especially from my head to my tailbone, like my whole oh. back. Got it, okay. And Mm -hmm. On the I had uh, also several herniated discs in the lower back and one in my neck. I don't know how to spell it, so I'm just going to say um, HD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's fine. Where in lower back? Lower back and also in my neck one. Lower back three and... And? Yeah. Oh, oh, just the yeah. lower back and the neck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so, how old were you when the chronic pain started? Was it as a result of an ailment? Was it like a secondary response? Or was it from an injury? No, it was not from an injury, Injury, I guess. It was um, just there uh, as a teenager. I, I don't know a specific age. I just know that it must have been there before 19. Mm -hmm. Because when I was 19, there were some other ailments and they asked me that question if I had back pain and I had to say yes, and, uh, but I cannot really say when it started. Got it. Okay. Okay. Also, I have a lot of pain here in my... In your jaw? In my jaw, because I'm biting or clenching teeth at night, and I'm wearing a splint already, but I don't know if it's the right one, so maybe mm -hmm. I should change it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or just do an MA session. <laughs> Right. Yeah, and this may, um, yeah, this gives me a headache, and also it goes here back into my neck area, which is very uh, tense, and also my whole back is very tense, and my shoulders as well. That's why I picked her. <laughs> <laughs> the, so my question to you is, which one of these came first? Uh, I think the spine, yeah, and then soon after the jaw and also migraine attacks, it was all a combination of, of it. And then the lower back and the neck started the herniated, herniated disc. Yeah, it was uh, 2009. The, the first I that was like later. Yeah, yeah that was later. Mm -hmm. But I have back pain chronically, like, uh, since before 19. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was the pain in the muscles, like, around, like, on the outer part of the body, or closer to the actual spine? Closer to the actual spine. Nice. Okay. Got it. Okay, so in this case, I already have an idea and know that I'm going to want to do the values in conflict with her. We are also going to do the MIT session plus the pain session. Okay? Now, just let's just have a nice chat. So, when you had the back pain in the spine, was there any dominant emotional stress at the time that you are aware of when you just kind of like think back? to that time in your life? Like circumstances, relationships? Uh, yeah, circumstances, of course. Uh, I had relationship issues, mm -hmm. um, like almost always. <laughs> and uh, also around that time at my business, uh, there were a lot of things. I started my business, my own business in 2008. And 2009, like maybe nine months later, I just had the um, first herniated discs in my lower back and I felt a lot of pressure and um, because I had a lot of responsibilities of course uh, being self-employed and um, 
Yeah, and also <coughs> the package which I was carrying with me. Yeah. Um, so what I also would like to ask from you is, you said the age of 19 mm -hmm. with, the, with the back pain. Just kind of want to go a little bit back to that time. Mm -hmm. What was emotionally, there's a lot of stress there for you. Mm -hmm. That was, that was uh, I finished um, college at that time, okay. 1920, mm -hmm. and yeah, that was of course because of the final exams, and um, yeah, I think um, there were also a lot of other issues simultaneously uh, mm -hmm. coming up, like inflammations always in my body. Right, and, right. And uh, yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. So my question is then, during that time, was there anything that you had to do or that you, that you felt obligated to do because you were told to do that? Or was there something in your life where you wanted to go in one direction and someone pull, like, either pulled you in another direction or there was an expectation, not necessarily verbally, but there was an expectation of, of them wanting to you to go in a different direction? Well, before, after I finished high school, that was uh, with 16, my mom wanted me to do a job, to do an apprenticeship, but mm -hmm. I wanted to go to college to uh, get my um, exams to go to university for studying. Smart move, normally it's the other way around. <laughs> Smart move, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that was the conflict uh, because she wanted to, she told me, well, it's good to have a, an apprenticeship um, and you can earn some money, then you have something um, in your hands. Uh, what you can show um, that you already accomplished something, and uh, but when you're just going to school, it's just like you don't have anything. Nice. So here we have anger and unresolved resentment towards mom, conflict in values, and having to fight or argue for what she wants in her life path and direction. You did end up going to college, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Also, I have to admit there was something um, of my dad an issue as well. Tell me. Um, because... Ooh. Um, You're gonna get clients like this, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Breathe when it happens, relax. <laughs> um, since he was uh, an abusive alcoholic and I didn't stay in contact with him since the divorce of my parents around 14, 15. I still felt to be, or I still felt obligated to do, uh, to go this path, um, to go to university just to please my dad and get approval from him and finally love. And so you fought against what mom wanted you to do because you were going towards in a direction of following of wanting to do something for the sake of approval from a father figure that wasn't even in your life anymore. Yes. So it's almost like you were fighting both parents for different yeah. reasons. Yeah. Woo. Okay. So I'm gonna start with the one that came first and that was mom. No, it was, which one, which, which one came first with the stress that was it mom or dad? Uh, with, um, concerning the pain? Yeah, in general. No, no, just the, with, because of the, the college, the college, um, which stress started first, was it mom or dad? Well, since, uh, since I was a child, I wanted to please my dad, so I guess this is the first one. Perfect. There we go. Your dreams are calling, decline or answer. <laughs> so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start with the MAT emotional healing. And then I'm going to flow with the pain structure after that. That is normally what I would do in general anyway. And you'll see in your structure that it's exactly the same. You can make exceptions if you want. Remember, you can be super flexible with this technique. Super flexible. But in this case, I feel like I want to start with that first and then we're going to move on to the conflict and values and also the, the pain. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. There's a bit of a rebel against mom as well in, this, in the sense of she wanted to do this and you didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of a, a punishment punch 
in there of not wanting to do what she suggested you to do, perhaps because she wasn't being the kind of mom that you wanted or needed her to be? Yeah, I didn't get any kind of support from her. Okay, so it's almost like you can't support me and why should I give you any credit for any form of support or advice that you give me? But I did. Uh, I always supported her and I was the parent. No, I mean when she wanted to support you, like you didn't want to give her the validation of yes, you are right or yes, I'm going to follow your advice to study no, this no. or study that, mm -hmm. right? So it was right. almost like that punch of like, ah, yes. mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. She always put her um, anxieties onto me on top. Right, yeah. Got it. Okay, perfect. So let's go back to that white room and let's ask Dad to step inside. I just wanted to check, right? Be playful, be thorough. You can, you. It's when you do a session, you can, you can just roll with it. But always remember to come back to the initial intention. Okay. So now, as we're looking at Dad standing there in front of you in the white room, and you're feeling that sadness, the worthlessness, the powerlessness. It's becoming aware of the anxiety and that I can never do it right. I'm a burden, I feel unwanted, and I feel unloved and numb. Where in your body do you feel that? As soon as he stepped in, I felt really um, a push down on my shoulders and my upper back started to hurt. Perfect, what else? I feel in my chest area, I feel anxious, panicky. Mm -hmm. In my stomach, I feel like there's a hole. Now, as you feel all these emotions in your body, is there any aspect of it that you feel outside of the body? Yeah, from my back. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely feel it outside. Like a heavy rock or just like a deep pressure. And this presence that you feel outside of the back with it, like a feeling of depression and feeling like a rock. Mm -hmm. Whose face do you see that you know or voice do you hear that you know? My father's. So now, I would like you just to take a nice deep breath and please do stay in the white room with, um, with Dad. Yeah, just keep him there in front of you. Just look at him for me. Mm -hmm. Nice. We're going to do this connection. Because I know that she will love it anyway. And the only thing because it's genetically related, it can only get better. So sometimes when I know that, I just automatically do it. I don't even ask the client because you know it's going to be positive. And the intention for the healing is solutions. It's healing. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, shit. Ah, me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> healing is playful. <laughs> so that's where I felt. This is you from behind. Mm -hmm. So I felt here, there on the right-hand side, more a little bit sitting on the right side of the spine. Kind of like in the middle, 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 but especially here at the lower back, I really felt it pulling. Like the heaviness of the clusters was a lot more to the left. Mm -hmm. So that's what I got. Yeah, I got also here, uh, like directly at the um, atlas. Oh, I didn't get that. Okay, perfect. And also like there where you put it uh, mm -hmm. in the upper back and then middle oh. and then 
here in the lower back area. Nice. Okay, great. So I'm going to talk out loud so that you follow me throughout the process. And you can now just relax. Actually, I would like it just to sit. Is it comfortable to sit back in the chair? I know it's not the best chair. Is it comfortable? Yeah. Okay, because I just want you to be comfortable because I could feel if you see a client that's in pain and they sit uncomfortable, it's going to create more pain. You want their body to relax so that the energy can just gently flow. Okay, you want it to flow. So, now what we're going to do is I'm just going to do exactly what she just did. Deep breath. Just relax. Exactly. I like that. Good start. See, it's already automatically programmed into her. She's not even the practitioner, but she knows a process is about to start to take place. And I've noticed a lot of you do that as well. You just automatically take a deep breath. Just reset. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm just gently going to connect with her. I'm going to put her into my life. My eyes are closed because that's how I like to connect with her. And so now what I'm going to do is we're just going to start with the emotional healing. And when you're ready, you can come back from wherever you find yourself right now and gently come back to me. <laughs> How are you? I feel kind of weird. Really? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Weird in what way? <laughs> Weird in a good way, like, oh. relaxed. <laughs> I'm like, after all that hard work? <laughs> no, like, like so relaxed, I could fall asleep almost. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> nice. Perfect. What else do you feel? I felt really, um, yeah, really a lot of heat in my hands. Nice. Um, Heat's always a good thing. Coldness is not coldness it means that there's shock. Perfect. Sorry for you. Please mm -hmm. continue. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I feel okay. I feel kind of neutral. There's nothing good or bad. Nice. How? Now here's the big question. Exactly, Greg. Mm. How's your back? <laughs> <laughs> it's just he was like ah at that moment cracking his own back and I'm like now we need to ask her <laughs> okay when I move my head I still feel tension in my shoulders like here so it's muscle tension. yeah it's muscle tension uh, got it my spine seems to be okay yeah. so if you feel that tension just for fun if you feel that tension in the shoulders let's have fun with it let's pretend that that tension had a voice. And if it did, what would it say? You cannot run away from me. Got it. Mm -hmm. Run away from who? Seems to be my father's voice. There we go. Perfect. I would like you to take, have your notepads ready because this is going to be a really cool exercise. So with the disconnection process, this is also something that you can throw extra in there or this can just be a random extra fun part of your toolbox that you can throw in anywhere. Okay. I would like you to go back to that beautiful white room. And let's invite Dad to step back inside. Perfect. And I'd like you just to be aware that Dad's there. And I would like you to look at him and silently in your mind three times. And I really would like you to own what you say and listen to my voice even as I say, own it. And silent in your mind to dad, I want you to say to him three times, I take my power back from you. I take my power of choice back from you. I take control of my life back from you. 
I take my femininity back from you. And also now, just speaking to the unconscious mind, this is me now being playful, just being creative. Also allowing you consciously and unconsciously, physically and emotionally and spiritually now to know and understand and realize that you are released from the job, responsibility, contract or obligation to please your father. And now giving that responsibility back to him. It's no longer your job. It's no longer your job. And you no longer have to accept it. Beautiful Patty, when you're ready, you can gently come back to me. How was that? Good, very powerful. Um, but when I started the first time, I had to hold my breath. Ah. And I had to remind myself that I'm breathing again. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. good. Yeah. Okay. And every time when I was saying good awareness, this, yeah, yeah. Every time when I was uh, telling my father this, uh, I reminded myself to breathe. Beautiful. Yeah. And how do you feel? I feel relaxed and like open, more yes. free, Beautiful. kind of. And your shoulders? They feel warm actually. That's healing, fantastic. Heat is good because when there's tension and rigidity, it clogs the, the blood vessels. Literally, it physically tenses up. So heat means that the blood vessels are opening up again. Blood flows flowing and streaming through again. That's beautiful. Do you feel like this was a good session? You feel ready to integrate? I felt something is missing. Um, tell me. Um, concerning my mom. Ah, oh, tell me about mom. There is something missing. I feel like a tension here in my head since we were talking about my mom mm -hmm. earlier and um, I felt that this is related to her mm -hmm. in some way. So what do you feel you've never said to your mom? that you know you probably should have said to her by now. This is your life. Take your own responsibility and don't let me responsible for your life. <clears throat> what stops you from saying it? What emotional stress stops you from saying it? I know that she will feel hurt when I tell her this. Mm -hmm. So so you will be responsible for her feeling. Right? Yeah, got it. So the reason why I immediately went to that is because if you looked at volume one, you would have come to the same conclusion. <coughs> Left side, communication, and the brain, jaw, communication, mm -hmm. stress associated with communication, left side, mom. And she also said mom, so it was perfect. That's how I came up so fast with what it was. Not psychic, just psychosomatics. It's science. <laughs> Spiritual science. Beautiful, nice, okay. So I would like you to feel, where in your body do you feel that burden of feeling responsible for mom's emotions and how she feels? I feel it deep in my chest. Got it. And, oh, and, and oh, here. Also, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, here it's kind of outside, inside. Outside, outside inside. Yeah. Got it, okay. Mm -hmm. So what, when you feel that part of it that's outside, whose face do you see or voice do you hear? that you recognize? Actually, it's my great-grandma. Ah. Um, and how does, how does that soul copy feel? She feels to me that she has a lot of burdens as well. Mm -hmm. um, and she doesn't want to have more burdens. Perfect. There we go. Got it. Nice. So we're going to do a healing here and in the heart, emotional healing, any instinctive responses that you are aware of in the body? Um, a little bit of fight, my mom. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. You had enough. There we go. <laughs> fight instinct. Great. So I have to list in my head, so I'm just going to go, I'm going to go with that now. Okay, because we did the spine, it was perfect, she was happy with it. I just played with this along because of the shoulders. Like if you have time to do a second session, like because that would have been a second session, if you have time, do it. Go for it. And I thought I would take advantage of this moment that I had here with her to do that. 
So that was perfect. Yes? yes. Thank you so much. Thank you too. Thank you, thank you.